This video will be demonstrating the installation of a Johnson Controls 9310 direct mount actuator onto a VG1000 three-way ball valve and a M9000-342 weather shield enclosure kit. To do this, you will need a Phillips screwdriver, a T20 Torx driver, two 11 32nd inch wrenches, two 7 8 inch open end wrenches, or two adjustable wrenches. The first step is going to be to remove the weather shield enclosure cover, loosening the four screws, one on each corner, but don't remove them completely. Remove the cover and set it aside. Remove the packaging material from inside the enclosure. Unpack and inventory the kit. The M9000-342 weather shield enclosure kit contains the enclosure, the enclosure cover, the mounting bracket with bearing, the mounting plates, two cable clamps with nuts, one shaft in a protective pocket, a thermal spacer, one plug, three self-tapping screws, and we have four screws and nuts for assembling the enclosure, and four screws and nuts for attaching it to the valve. First, we'll be taking the valve and installing the thermal spacer over it. Next, we'll install the mounting bracket on top of it with these four screws and nuts. Temporarily install the shaft, which will help keep the bracket aligned. Tighten the screws and nuts to a recommended torque of 35 to 44 inch pounds. Next, we'll want to install the mounting plate. Now this has two indented features on the plate that will align into the holes on the mounting bracket. Ensure you align the plate onto the mounting bracket before you proceed with the next step. Take the three self-tapping screws and get them aligned. They will not appear straight at first, but they'll self-tap anyway. Tighten the screws to a recommended torque of 31 to 40 inch-pounds. Next, we'll want to align the marks on the top of the shaft with the marks on the valve stem and install the shaft. Install the weather shield base and seal assembly on the weather shield enclosure mounting bracket. Secure using the four number six half inch screws and nuts in each corner using the Phillips head screwdriver and 11 32nd inch wrench. Tighten the screws to a recommended torque of 9 to 12 inch pounds. Next, we're going to secure the strain relief conduit adapters. Simply insert the conduit adapter into the left side hole and tighten the nut on the threads from inside the enclosure. Make sure that it is a snug fit. Feed the electrical cables through the strain relief conduit adapter. Loosen the adapter to make feeding the cable through easier. Position the actuator onto the internal bracket, aligning the four studs with the holes in the bracket, and positioning the actuator with the anti-rotation slot.
towards the rear of the enclosure. Using the Torx driver, tighten the actuator screw to 8 to 12 inch pounds. Make sure that the actuator is able to move without binding by firmly depressing the release button and rotating it back and forth. Also check that it is snug in place. Since there is no cord coming out of the other port, we're going to want to plug this other hole. So we're going to take this plug and install it to the bottom. The ring nut will go on the inside of the enclosure. Tighten the plug to a snug fit. It's okay if you have one extra cable clamp left over, which can be used if you have end switches or for other applications where you have other wires coming out of the enclosure. Now we will install the cover the same way that it came packaged. Tighten the four corner screws to 9 to 12 inch pounds. The final step is this cable gland needs to be tightened to create a water resistant seal. This completes the installation.